Hi everyone, welcome to Sunday School with the Diocese of New Jersey. My name is Ann Delgado, this is my son Matthew, and we are really excited to join you this week. If you are watching these videos on our YouTube channel, you can watch them anytime with your family uh, that works for you. You'll find a whole playlist on the Diocese of New Jersey's YouTube channel. Uh, or you can join us for our Zoom sessions every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, and we gather online to uh, talk about the story. So however you are using these sessions, we are really blessed to be able to spend this time with you each week. So we are going to stick with our regular pattern, tried and true, and we have a great Bible story today from the Old Testament. This summer we're going back to the Old Testament lessons, and we will talk about it. We have um, kind of a different activity today, and we always start with our opening prayer. So I'll say a line, and uh, Matthew and, and you guys at home can repeat it. Ready? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Keep us in your loving care. Keep us in your loving care. Guide us through the coming day. Guide us through the coming day. In our work and in our play. In our work and in our play. Keep us pure and sweet and true. Keep us pure and sweet and true. In everything we say and do. In everything we say and do. Amen. Amen. All right. So today we have another uh, story. I mentioned at the beginning that we are going back to... Uh, the Old Testament this summer. Um, summertime is a, a time of the year when we really talk about the stories of the people of God. Um, you know, from December through um, Pentecost, we're talking about Jesus and his ministries, um, and then the early church, uh, the ministries of his disciples. But n now, this part of the year, we go back and we talk about the stories of God that, uh, that sort of bring us to uh, Jesus's ministry. Oh my goodness, thunder. So... The sun's out and it just thundered out of the blue. How, how interesting. So these are the stories that remind us of the many ways that God has interacted with his people um, throughout the years, the many, many, many years, um, and also how God's people respond to God. So uh, this is this is actually a very interesting perspective in that. This is an interesting response to God that we're going to learn about today. So we have a story about Jacob uh, who's sort of a big character uh, in the book of Genesis in our in the um, Old Testament. And if we know anything about Jacob, it's that he's a very complicated person. Um, we actually talked about him last year uh, in a story that didn't he didn't come off looking very good. He did not make some smart choices there. Uh, he actually tricked his brother. Uh, kind of in a mean way, to um, get his father's blessing. Uh, so if you want to refresh your memory about that, you can look it up. Um, it's Jacob and his brother Esau. And Esau was actually the older brother. And as the older brother would have gotten um, his father Isaac's blessing. Um, but Jacob tricked his father. Um, and it wasn't a very nice thing to do. So, so Jacob's got a little bit of complicated history here. Uh, and in fact, partly because he was not getting along well with his brother, he left home for many, many years. They were separated. And so now in this story, he's coming home to reconcile with his brother. And that's a really important word. Do we know the word reconcile? Like, um, try and like, say sorry. Right. Try and say sorry. Try to make things right. Right. And so sometimes we need to reconcile um, for our own behavior. And sometimes we're actually called upon to reconcile something that may not have been a result of our actions or might not be our fault, but we are still called as God's people to bring about reconciliation or to bring things to right relationship. And that's that's kind of, it's a big word, but it's an important thing to remember that, that as God's people, we are called to be reconcilers. We are called to help bring people together. Um, and so this this story is part of that um, part of that for us. So that's, that's one, one of the lessons we can learn from that. And that, that is a big word, uh, reconciliation. Um, but it's an important thing for us to do as, as God's people. All right. And so another thing we learn in the story is that Jacob's history might be less than ideal, but did God ever stop loving him? Did God ever stop having, um, ministry for Jacob? Nope. So, 
making a couple mistakes, making a couple thousand mistakes, uh, Jacob shows us that, that God's still very much uh, active in his life, engaged in his life, interested in his life, um, that he loves Jacob and still has work for Jacob to do. So we don't have to be perfect. And Jacob shows us that so that um, God doesn't stop loving us and including us in his work. Uh, so these are important things um, for us to remember just from this story. And, you know, it's certainly true of Jacob. It's true for all of us. And um, as we read this story, um, which actually, interestingly, I have not taught before. It has not come up in our Sunday school rotation before. It's a story that I think is really interesting and teaches us a lot of things, but it's 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 uh, kind of an interesting story. So we'll see if we can relate. But I want you to think about it as I'm reading it. Uh, think about a time that you have done something that took a lot of strength, like physical strength. All right. And what made you keep going and not give up? All right, so have that in the back of your mind uh, as we're reading the story, which is called Jacob Wrestles. So we're going to see who Jacob wrestles in this story. And it's from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 31, if you're reading in the Big Bible. So here's Jacob looking pretty happy, even though I just talked about this well, we'll talk about this in a minute. But Jacob was on his way home from a long trip and stopped to sleep by a river one night. During the night, a man woke Jacob up and began to wrestle him. Jacob was surprised. Who is this, he wondered. What does he want? After wrestling all night, the man begged Jacob to let him go. No, said Jacob, not until you've blessed me. The man asked, what is your name? Jacob told the man his name. Then the man blessed Jacob and said, Now you will have another name, Israel. It means you have wrestled with God. What a surprise. Could it really be true? Jacob had not really wrestled with a man. Jacob had wrestled God, and God blessed him. Jacob hurried the rest of the way home. What a story he had to tell his family. All right. So that, I'm going to be honest, is uh, a story that sort of, a telling of the story that sort of glosses over some of the complexities that I talked about earlier. You know, Jacob's tripping along, happy to see his family. There's a lot of history there that this particular version doesn't go into. So I really encourage you to go back uh, and maybe read that in the Big Bible. Uh, again, uh, Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 31, because there's a little bit more going on than this this particular version. Um, lets us in on. So, um, you know, if you want to dive a little deeper, I really recommend that. But we'll talk about a few things from this story today, because there's a lot of interesting uh, stuff going on here. So first of all, and if during this discussion, you know, you're watching this at home, you need to push pause, take as long as you want, there's a lot going on. Uh, so push start when you're ready. But in this story, one of the first things we notice is that this is another story, and we've, we've actually had quite a few this year, where God give someone a new name, right? Did you notice that? We've talked about this, I think, a couple weeks now, um, where God's giving someone Saul to Paul, um, Abram, Abram to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah. Um, what else? Simon to Peter. Yeah. Um, didn't Matthew, the disciple Matthew change his name? That I can't remember. Uh, but I know that there's in a couple of stories um, that that is the case. But this is another one. And, and as it happens, these are two very significant names. Um, in this instance, Jacob, um, the, the name Jacob can mean supplanter. You know what that means? It's a little um, bit of an odd word. If I supplant somebody, what do I do? Help them. Mm-mm. I sort of overcome them. I overtake them. I, I move them aside, maybe. Oh. Right? So... Is that a, that's not really a good thing. Yeah, it's it? kind of... That's exactly right. That's not really a good thing, is it? Hmm. Uh, so... And then we saw that Jacob did that with his um, older brother. And there were all sorts of reasons for that. And, you know, something that, that had been foretold and um, filling out... Um, God's plans, but in that moment, J Jacob supplanted his older brother. He took 
over something that didn't necessarily belong to him. And so his name means that one who seizes something or overcomes uh, something. And so after the story, he's no longer Jacob, who who supplants, he becomes Israel, which means God prevails. What does prevail mean? We're using a lot of big words today. Um, God wins. Right. He comes out on top. Exactly. He wins. He comes out on top. God prevails. And that's actually, I like the the sort of long-term nature of that as well, because sometimes in our world we look and we think, where is God in this? You know, when bad things happen and it takes us a while uh, to see God in action, but we know that always in the end, God does prevail. God does come out um, as the victor always. Uh, and so so I like that sort of long-term um, word as well. So God prevails. How does God prevail in this story? He reunites Jacob with his family. Okay, absolutely. That's And that's the long-term answer here. And we don't even, that's, that's barely hinted at in this particular story. But that is the result of this. All right. So um, God prevails in this, this sort of strange wrestling match. Um, you know, between God, uh, between Jacob and, and God's angel or messenger, um, that it becomes clear that it is it, it really God that Jacob is wrestling with um, in a sort of physical way. And again, in this story, um, we see that Jacob does not emerge um, uninjured, that the angel actually sort of strikes Jacob on the hip and it sort of puts his hip out of whack and he's going to walk. Uh, with a limp going forward. So he is marked by this, by this encounter with God. He doesn't come away unmarked. Um, you could even say he's a little bit injured, but he is changed and blessed by this encounter also. And so we can think of some ways in which, you know, when, when we encounter God, how are we marked? How are we changed? How do we go forward blessed, but different? Right. These are all also, also some really interesting questions. So so God does prevail in this story because ultimately Jacob and his family are reconciled, which is what God's God's uh, hope and dream for the world as a whole. We're still engaged in that work of reconciliation. Right. But God is prevailing. So think about how God prevails in this story. Think about how God is prevailing in your life and in the world around you. All right, but that's a very, very long term thing to keep your eye on. It's something to think about how God is working. God is prevailing. All right. So another thing we think about in this story is that Jacob shows a lot of determination and he shows a lot of perseverance. Another big word. What does perseverance mean? Hey, um, well, he gets like through it. He gets through it. He sticks with it. He keeps at it. Right? So he really does. He could have, honestly, if we think about it, if you woke up in the middle of the night and someone you didn't know was trying to wrestle you, I'm not sure we all wouldn't just run the other direction because that is a little bit strange for sure. Um, but he sticks with it and he engages in it. And... Um, really uh, sticks with it, even though the outcome is not clear. He does not know what's going to happen, but he sticks with it. And there's a, there's a real determination. And this is someone, Jacob, who has been living um, with some guilt about his past behavior, maybe some fear of what's going to happen when he travels back to see his family, to see his brother and his family. He doesn't know how he's going, if he's going to be welcomed or not. That might create some anxiety. So he's living with a lot of that, right? And I think that's something that we can relate to. Um, and, you know, we can, we all know we have some things that, that make us um, uneasy. All right, but he's ready to come home to his brother. And now he's engaged in this, this sort of strange wrestling match uh, with the angel or the messenger, but he refuses to give up and he keeps going. He is determined to see this through. Why is that important for us to hear today? 
Why is a story of perseverance important for us? I don't know, really. Do I ever tell you to stick with something and to keep yeah. at it? Yeah. Um, baseball, I guess. Okay. So some things are harder for us and some things are easier. When it's easier for us, we don't always need to, we don't always need the encouragement, right? But some things are harder, but still worthwhile. And Jacob shows us that. And so with baseball, you know, we, t we talk all the time about you don't hit a home run at your first at bat usually. And it takes a lot of practice and a lot of playing. Um, with Matthew's piano, um, you know, it's not a magical gift that people are necessarily born with. It's practice, 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 and it takes a lot of time. Um, with some of the things that, that I engage in with, with my ministries and, and with the things I do, they don't always come easily. Um, we have to work at them and work on them and be patient um, and stick with it. Um, and those are, those are all things that are important for us. When things matter, we stick with it, right? And so that's, that's an important thing. So maybe uh, at home, talk about that. Think, think, think about what you've really had to stick with when you've had to persevere. All right. And why that can be important, because also in our faith, we have to persevere in our faith. It is not always easy. It's simple, right? Love God, love your neighbor. Simple, but it's not easy. We have to stick with it. It is hard sometimes to put God first. It is hard sometimes to love our neighbor as ourselves, but we have to persevere. So this is an important lesson for us in this story, an important reminder that Jacob can show us. All right. And again, Jacob doesn't always get it right. We don't always get it right. But God is faithful. All right. And lastly, that brings me to that sometimes we wrestle with God too. We don't think of it in terms of actual physically wrestling with God, but sometimes we also uh, struggle a little bit with God. Sometimes we um, don't understand something. Sometimes we get angry or sad or upset about something. Um, and we want things our own way instead of God's way. And those, those are all us struggling or wrestling with God, right? Not on the floor, like, you know, siblings might wrestle or uh, something like that. But we are still, we are still, it's a bit of a tug of war between us and God sometimes, uh, in our habits and in the way we think and in the way we treat others. All right, so can you think of one or two ways you wrestle with God? One or two ways in which you which you know what you are supposed to be doing, but it's a little bit of a when struggle you, to like, get there. don't want to do something. Yeah, can you, like, what's one thing you might not want to do? Go to school in the morning or get up. Right, well, and also in particular with God. So how about go to church? Sometimes we get a little bit of resistance about going to church. Uh, and it's not something that we want to, we want to do. All right. So that's, that's a way sometimes we wrestle a little bit with God. Oh, do I want to take the time to serve others? Do I want to take the time uh, to go to church each week and praise God? Do I want to uh, take, you know, do change these habits, make these sacrifices of time um, and, and other things. So, I think think about how you might be resisting a little bit, a little bit struggling. All right. Are we treating others? The, we know how God wants us to treat others. And is that always how we do it? All right. I know I don't pass that test all the time. All right. That doesn't always uh, work out. And then I think, OK, well, I didn't do that. Great. So I'm going to try again uh, and I'm going to try to do better. And so it's an ongoing because we're persevering. Right. So is it okay to wrestle with God? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. All right. Again, that's what makes these Old Testament stories so interesting for us because we see how God's people have encountered God and responded to God. And this is how Jacob responded to God. And God blesses him. All right. So it's okay to wrestle with God. We, we already kind of know who's going to prevail, right? Who's going to prevail? God. Right? So, but that doesn't stop us from, from 
engaging because guess what? At the end of the day, God wants to be involved in your life. And even if you're struggling with him, you're still engaged with him. All right. So that's, that's, he'll take that. That's, that's totally fine. All right. So remember that even though they did wrestle, Jacob never let go of God and God never let go of Jacob. Right. It's kind of important, isn't it? Important thing to remember. So here's a couple of activities you can do at home. Now, this book, <laughs> the Bible, uh, the storybook Bible actually says, wrestle with your sibling. I don't, I don't, I mean, if I don't, I'm not going to recommend that. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to recommend that. Um, this is a more physical story today. I happen to have two sons who are always engaged in uh, physical activity of one kind or another. And I don't think I need to necessarily encourage that in my household. Uh, that is up to you in your own household. However, there is one sort of more contained type of wrestling that we think is kind of fun, and that is thumb wrestling. In fact, Matthew and I were just thumb wrestling a couple weeks ago, um, getting ready for this video. So if you have never thumb wrestled, shall we give them an example? So you, right, sort of gather hands, and then you go one, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. And then you try using only your thumb to hold the other person's thumb down and count to three. three. But don't get too rough. All right. This is very contained. Oh, I almost got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one, two, three. All right. Matthew prevailed. So why don't you try some thumb wars at your house? Um, gently, not, not too out of control, but that, that, that would be sort of a fun way to wrestle, but wrestle a little safely. So another activity you could try is to make a sort of obstacle course, um, either in your house with pillows and chairs, or now that the weather is warm, um, outside in the yard or another, other, uh, space. And as you face the obstacles in this obstacle course, which should be a little bit more fun, like Jacob did, uh, remember that God is with you and blesses you the whole time. So those are two, uh, fun things you can do to remind yourself. This is kind of a different story, uh, and it's kind of a fun story. So we'll remember that. And if you're looking for more activities, you can check out the Diocese of New Jersey's webpage. You can check out um, our parish webpage, which is stpetersfreehold.org. And we have lots of uh, fun activities and formation stuff. But thank you for coming to Sunday School today. Uh, we are really enjoying these. I am so glad we get to spend this time together. Um, and I think we have all just really grown during the, the, these last... Um, months and over a year now. And I hope that as you think about this story this week, you remember that just like God didn't let go of Jacob, he is not going to let go of any of us either. We are God's beloved children. Uh, and so we, we learn that. And we are going to persevere in our faith as we remember this story. So here is our closing prayer. And this time, I'm going to leave a little space, a little pause in there for you to add your own prayer in your mind or out loud, okay? Dear God, sometimes we wrestle, but you never give up on us. You love us, change us, and bless us. Thank you for the blessing of in my life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Bye, everyone. See you next time.